Hey fam, I asked you guys on Instagram to see what kind of questions that you had for me in my reflection of my one year journey of being on YouTube. I also have a mix of answers or questions from you guys and I added a few in there as well. If you missed out on the opportunity to ask me a question, you can still have a chance to follow me on my Instagram for the next time that we have a Q&A. All right, let's begin, shall we? Community question by Patrick Flores. LDR advice? So for those of you who first subscribed to the channel, I started out doing long distance relationship advice. But I don't do that anymore. But if I had to give you long distance advice, I would have to say you got to believe in your relationship first before anybody else does. Because if you don't believe in it, how can you convince not only other people, but also the one that you love that you will make it through. So I believe that you'll make it through. Lan and I have been going on for like six years. Yeah, 2016, six years. Wow. Uh, still a long distance relationship, but hopefully this year will be the year, God willing. In my one year of being on YouTube, was I offered any brand deals? The answer is no. However, I did receive opportunities through email. If you're watching this from the future, I only have 400 subscribers, but I'm even surprised to know that people under 400 subscribers still get business emails. And it's legit, so I'm actually pretty excited about that. Doesn't have anything to directly relate to this channel, but it does help out, so opportunities. If you think that YouTube is only about the thousand subscribers, channels it's not so definitely keep working on it and work on the things that you love and it'll definitely show what you're about and what you can offer to the world community question by justin joseph espejo what's up man thanks for your question what's your mentality now in creating versus when you started any change my mentality when i first started was that i would try to offer any advice that i could on the internet or just continue putting out videos on the internet thinking that something would gain traction especially the way that my video production is that's only like a small percentage of what value you actually bring to the person of course what i actually say in the video content is king and it really shows i thought that i can kind of post like selfish content but now after i've gone through three different youtube courses i realized that for me to grow and actually to make a bigger impact not in just youtube but also in the world in general it's better if I have a more focused approach and niching down and going into photo and video is where my journey is lying at the moment. I would say I was still in the honeymoon phase of being in YouTube on day one, but now I'm kind of like systematic approach of, okay, like, okay, let's, let's see what kind of video I can put out there and you know, what's worth it, what do I enjoy? and also what do people want to watch and kind of getting that balance. But at least now I kind of getting an idea of what I should be posting instead of just making things in the dark or at least making things blindly. I kind of have some kind of method to my madness. Not perfect, traction is very slow, but that's okay. Um, I know that if I continue to pursue 1% better through video, we'll get there. Sean Cannell said it was that we kind of make selfish content or at least we do make selfish content and now that I kind of got that rebuking, now I kind of get the sense that I don't just make content for me, but I genuinely make stuff so that I can share it with others. And it's not that my life is super amazing, it's just that I have such an appreciation for what life has and what life gives, and not just life in general, but for what we as individuals can offer to other people. I've uh, kind of surrendered to that truth. Me making stuff on YouTube is not just about me, what I can create for myself, but what value I can give to others. Have you experienced burnout in your year of YouTube and how do you deal with it? I would say yes. I dealed with burnout many times. It was mostly because I was putting so much stress on me, not meeting my Monday upload deadlines that I've set upon myself. I felt that I would work three to four days a week at work and try to get a hold of this whole adulting thing. I just moved into my apartment. But even before that, I was just trying to have uh, a restful week and I just had so much pressure on myself to just put out videos, put out videos, put out videos. And I think I spent more time worrying about videos than actually making them. And even when I wasn't working on them, I'm like 24 hours, like nonstop thinking about like, what kind of videos can I make? How can I make this work? And I was not as loving and patient as I could be with myself. But now since I'm kind of like starting from a place of rest, thinking, hey, if I don't post a video every week, it's not the end of the world. Even if I could post one a month or something like that, sure. But to me, I know that I definitely want to put out one a week, but even if I miss a week or miss the day, not a big deal. For me, the most important thing is to continue on the journey and just keep posting because it won't be for nothing because naturally I will gravitate towards improvement. So for burnout, don't put too much pressure on yourself. Still continue to do the things that you love and continue to do the things for the people that you care for even if it's the younger version of yourself who you're making videos for. 
and that will definitely impact other people. And in the long run, you want to incorporate rest into your system for doing YouTube, especially if you're doing it part-time or you're trying to do it part-time and you want to turn it full-time. Because if your system for doing YouTube is unsustainable for you, it's just not gonna work out. So you have to make it work for you. Yeah, we want to grow fast, but progress is better than pausing forever. So stop it, yeah. Community question by Invincible. How difficult is staying consistent in content creating? How difficult? On a scale from one to 10, uh, one being not so difficult and 10 being very difficult. I would place it at an eight, to be honest. A video like this, a Q&A is quite easy. You guys ask me questions, I answer them, you know, I hit record and stop. But on a different kind of video, whether it's like a tutorial or a review, or some kind of like, I don't know, vlog test. You gotta develop things like story, you gotta do a little bit of research to see what people are like searching for. Uh, you gotta do the thumbnails and you know, taking as many of those, editing that and editing the video. And then you still have to do it again the following week and the following week. And then the difficult part about being consistent is dealing with the inconsistent thing that happened in life. And for me, the way that I've dealt with that is just to kind of work ahead. So actually at the moment, I'm like three videos ahead, um, but still kind of working in between those, like thumbnails and stuff. But um, that's the way to uh, be consistent is to have a reliable system that you can work on, sticking to it, and just continuing to show up as much as you can. It's difficult, um, but I enjoy it. Okay, next community question by Abigail. Unexpected blessings. Unexpected blessings, I would say burnout. Yeah, burnout is the bad part, but like the blessing that came out of that was that I realized that rest is not overrated and that rest is actually part of the working process. Yeah, when you're at your own job, we have like, what, four hours of work, five hours of work before we have our break. Well, in a similar way, when it comes to even YouTube, um, it makes sense that, you know, we can't always be thinking about YouTube all the time. I actually get some of my ideas through like Eureka moments and I, I get them whether I'm in the shower, right when I'm about to go to bed, all these things. I used to feel guilty if I hung out with friends or went to go play tennis for a long time, or even if I was watching Netflix or playing video games. But now I'm starting to incorporate rest into my workflow so that I kind of have the best of all worlds while still being able to not have any regrets about doing YouTube. Because as much as I enjoy this, it's hard to enjoy it when you just keep into your mind all the time. So rest, it's definitely underrated and I think we don't do it enough. Is YouTube still fun despite the work it takes to maintain? Yeah, actually one of my favorite experiences is actually pressing publish or at least seeing the video go live. Even though there's not as many views, I think that's a blessing as well just because I still have time to kind of shift around what my style is, what my voice is and to improve on this craft. I would be pretty embarrassed if this kind of video made like millions of views or even 10,000s of views and I wasn't proud of that work or at least I thought the video was not up to my standards. I mean, whatever, uh, the journey is the journey and uh, we just respect where we are in each of our milestones. For those of you who don't know, I'm a nurse and while I was working during the pandemic, I was even scared that I would lose my life because being exposed to this thing. And it's amazing how much you think that adults know what they're doing. And then while they're going through this pandemic, you know, you realize that, wow, these guys really don't know what they're doing. We're just kind of throwing whatever we can, just throw masks on and whatever. Anyway, I realized life was short. And one of the regrets that I had was that I didn't do what I wanted to do, which was to pursue this calling that I felt towards creating content. And, um, so yeah, that's what I'm doing now. And I definitely feel fulfilled, even though I'm still kind of just figuring this all out as well. I could still be on YouTube or I could be working for somebody else, who knows. And last but not least, community question by Mommy Mango Ray. The most important lesson you've learned. I think the most important lesson that I've learned is finding clarity. Yeah, I recognize this calling that I had for content creation, but I didn't quite realize what I wanted with it. And the last YouTube course that I wanted up taking was Sean Cannell's Video Ranking Academy. In his workbook, it gives you like a whole bunch of questions about clar clarifying like, why are you doing this? Who are you serving? And all these questions. And one of the things I greatly appreciate about his course and his workbooks was that through these clarity questions, it wasn't just like 
really for the sake of business or entrepreneurship, but it actually makes you think about why are you doing what you're doing. And I realized that it wasn't just about like having a business, running a business, but I think it's also true to life. Like whether you run a, a nonprofit or even if you're just serving as a leader in your local church or in your community, I think it's very important. Now, I know it's very important to have clarity on what your values are so that not only can you impact the world greatly as like the corporate <laughs> bigger picture but you can also impact the world or at least the lives of other people who are closest to you like for me i'm going to be a husband soon you know to be a father one day one of the things that i stopped doing consistently but is i've always had a hard time doing consistently but i'm starting to do more and more of now that i'm doing more youtube and i'm seeking more clarity is journaling I realized that in a question and answer format, I find it easier for me to really put down my thoughts rather than storing them in my mind. And it's not just for the sake of like, oh wow, you know, it looks nice where I can look back in history. But I've also accepted the um, theory. Someone said that the mind is not meant for retaining thoughts, but for generating them. And for me, I don't have the greatest memory. So for me to go ahead and write down my thoughts and realize, okay, where's my journey? You know, what is the direction I'm going to? How is the decisions that I made and what things could I have done better? That helps me improve, not just in my endeavors, but life in general. So clarity, whether it's in your relationships, your side hustles, your career, you know, whatever endeavors that you have, I think clarity is something that you need to see for yourself. And if we continue to lack rest and continue to overwork ourselves and, you know, divvy up our time for everybody else except for us, I think we're missing opportunity for that clarity. Yeah, we may love life, but that little sense of clarity just puts everything more in focus. The most important things in focus really double our happiness in life. If you want to catch more of my thoughts on content creation, I am starting to try to blog more and I'll leave a description to my blog or at least my website down in the description below for you to check out. But until then, I have these videos for you to watch. I thank you very much for your support all this time. For those of you who have subscribed since day one or along the way, I'm very happy to know that I can bring value to you and that we can all make this world a better place. And I hope that I can continue to put out the good content that you guys are looking for. And uh, yeah, I'm looking to see you in future videos. Thank you again for everything, everything. Alrighty now, I Mike and I encourage you to add life to what matters and I will catch you 